question was in fact this, uh, Lena, that why does diversity matter in a team? And at the early stage of, even in the early stage, how can we incorporate uh, this diversity in the teams? Yeah, in fact, in interestingly enough, to this morning, uh, Hillary Clinton gave a speech in Silicon Valley and someone tweeted about it, where she said that this, uh, diversity is no longer a nicety, it's a necessity for success of business. More and more people are talking about that. But what's very interesting though, Herman, is that when you use the word diversity, in the US it means something quite different. Most people tend to talk about gen bringing gender, bringing females, and, and some people stop at that. Uh, other people go, wait a minute, there's women of color, there's uh, other levels of diversity. What I was talking about earlier was more in terms of diversity, not in terms of people, whether gender, race, religion, whatever, but also in terms of thought, people from different backgrounds, scientists, a poet. So there's many different levels of diversity and I prefer to take, and I think that's where your question came, which is a broader definition of diversity of thought, of, of backgrounds. Um, and really when you, it's been shown that when you get a group of same people in the room, you get things done maybe very efficiently because everyone's thinking alike, but you're not going to get an innovative solution. You take a room of people with very, very different perspectives. It could either really, really badly not work or it can work very, very well. And if it works very, very well, you get great innovation. But in order for that to happen, you also need to have skill sets to be able to make sure you bring out that, that, that uh, advantage of diversity. One of the things I teach, for example, is intercultural negotiations and communications, how can you use the tools to make sure that people speak up, that people actually contribute? Because without the right skills, just having diversity alone is not enough because some people would just get so turned off, they'll just keep quiet and not contribute. So you wanna make sure you have the right elements in place that the diversity can be brought out and there can be true clashes of opinions in a very uh, collegial way people have a trust that it's okay, that they can raise their points of view, then the diversity will bring about amazing innovations. Otherwise, it can also be a very bad thing. Yes, I mean, one of the good examples that uh, uh, one of the old mentors was using uh, on the diversity is the cross-pollination thing. You know, uh, when you, I mean, it's, it's you know, cross-pollination, ensures that you're not inheriting any genetically uh, diseases, you know, within the industry. So believe it or not, even within a subgroup of industries, there are some genetically inherited uh, bad habits. So when you have this kind of cross pollination from different subsectors and different industries, uh, you know, you ensure that you're maintaining a decent level of, of innovation. Uh, into that side and it's it's very clear and vivid when it comes to especially the digital content uh, subsphere you know digital content has people from a linguistic background people from an uh, 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 engineering background from an algorithmic background or mathematical background you know the combination of all of this although it's, it's not that easy to maintain uh, a kind of harmony within different mindsets but once you reach this kind of equation you know there is a kind of a of a an uncontrolled beautiful uh, hype happening into your organization again from even a business perspective uh, if you are a technical person and you have a business person and you have a, a legal uh, person uh, on boards, and uh, you have in your advisory board some some finance uh, person. I mean, all of this is creating uh, a kind of, you know, a, a think tank within your organization, and this is what's all of. Uh, uh, I mean, what is in a startup? The biggest thing in startup is the knowledge of the founders and the the knowledge the advisory board is bringing to the table. So. The more you diversify into that, the more knowledge you're bringing on board. And actually, this is your biggest asset. So, and this is why knowledge management as a sign was created, is to contain knowledge. And if it is a, a monotonous kind of knowledge, you don't need to contain it because you have too many speaking the same language. But if it is 
uh, you know, a, a multi, a cosmopolitan kind of thing from from a thinking perspective, from uh, from from business approach. So this is a really a big uh, value uh, kind of asset that you would love to maintain. That is really leveraging your startup value buy time. Thank you.